let me try that again. Control button, hit the space bar, and type in I, and you see the IIF there below. I'm typing I again, so anything there, and I click on it, and it pops up. And then I'm, if I'm not sure how it works, I can highlight the word itself or the function itself, and then I'm click on the question mark, and it's going to tell me what it is. It's an expression, is a Boolean expression, where you put an expression, and if the first part, if it's true, you put the true answer in the first part. If the false part, or if what you have does not meet the criteria, it's going to be false. It's in the second part. So I'm going to go down here and see how it work, see how it works. So down here at the IIF, they have orders and order amounts is greater than thousand dollars. If it is greater than thousand dollars, there's a seven Lord's order. If it's not, they're using standard order. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to do something similar to that. I'm going to go in and IIF. So I'm going to open paren with this. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab the invoice paid. So if invoice paid equals true, remember it had true or false, so if it equals true, then the first part is the true part. So I'm putting quotes here. Paid in full. Oops. And then if it's not true, I'm going to put a comma here. If it's not true, I'm going to give it something else. Now, I know that what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab a number. Gross amount is a number, and I want to put in with this um, gross amount is still owed. thing is that gross amount is either a number or a string, and then I'm going to add it to a string. Usually, you'd have to go in front of gross amount and put two text and have to change it that way. So I put two text and then I'll do a plus sign and add the is owned. Now the thing is inside crystal, if I use the ampersand behind this, I don't have to convert gross amount to a string. It'll convert the whole the whole string for me. So behind the gross amount here, I'm gonna put an ampersand, and then I'm gonna put uh, open quote, and then I'm gonna put a space there to put a space, one space between the gross amount and is still owed. And if I could spell it'd be even better. So, because I use the ampersand, it now turns this gross amount from a number to a string. So this whole statement between the uh, from the comma uh, over to this last close parent is now a string. Otherwise, I would have to go in front of gross amount and put two text or CSTR and convert it to a string. So if the invoice is true, paid in full. If it's not true, then you'll get uh, whatever the amount is, is still owed. Now the other question is, I've got single quotes around paid in full and double quotes around is still owed. I did that to mess with people's minds a little bit because it doesn't matter which one you use as long as you start with one, like paid in full, you end with the same one. Here I have a double to start it off and double quotes to end it off. So I'm going to check the syntax and it says no errors found. So I'm going to go up here and click OK. And we're going to save and close. And I'm going to go to Design tab so I can see where to put this. Um, our formula, so I'm going to grab the formula here and I'm going to drop it off inside Details section. Let's go ahead and preview this. And let me go ahead and right click on, let me do a little function, I mean a little uh, clean up here, make that the same. Let me line the tops here just a tad, make it look a little more presentable. Okay, I'm going to click on formula, hold down the control button, click on the gross amount, and then I'm going to align the tops. Okay, now if you notice over here page 20 and 20, that's where the first falses pop open. So we have, um, it's false, so the 2567 is still owed, and the rest are paid in full. Now I'm going to go back and I want to edit this formula again, and this time, we're going to use the case statement. So a lot of programmers use case statement, a lot of people aren't programmers use case statement. It's a little bit, the case statement makes your, your, it makes the formula a lot cleaner. A little, not necessarily easier to understand, but a lot cleaner. So I'm going to go in, I'm typing select, and then select what? We're going to select a field, it could be a field, it could be a parameter, we're going to select whatever that object is, which is paid in full, is our field. So our first case is, we're selecting that field, and case is, okay, if the case here is true, oops, and then we're going to 
colon. So the case is whatever's behind or behind follows case is our is our expression. So this one we're saying does the paid invoice equals true? If it does, we want to have paid in full. Next case, give me a different case. Okay, what happens if it's false? So we'll put it in there so if they it's like the paid invoice. And this time the case is false. Semicolon. So whatever follows that is what we're going to put in there. So in this in, in this instance, we put in the gross amount and I'm putting the amber sign, which will make this whole expression a string. Amount uh, open paren is still owed. And then you also have a default. If it meets none of these, you can have a default. We're not going to need a default right now. And I can have multiple cases on here. So let's say uh, when I see this used a lot on, uh, here at Lawson, you want to grab the period. So um, you have a parameter called period. And our case would be 1. If case is 1, then January. If case is 2, then February. If case is 3, then, then March, and so forth and so on. So you can select the statement there. So basically what it's saying is select if paid invoice equals true, then paid in full. If select invoice is false, then um, the other. So like I'm saying again, these are exactly the same, just totally different. So let's check the syntax again. No errors found. Save and close. And it's basically doing the same thing. Now, why are you doing this way now? Well, I just want you to see that there's more than one way to skin a cat, to peel the onion, any other cliche I come up with and none come to mind. So let me go ahead and let's go back in this, at this form and do the, the um, if then else. So I'm going to go up here and highlight all these lines. And then I'm hit the, uh, the little slashes there, which makes us a comment. And let's go to our basic if then else. So if our field invoice paid equals true, then paid in full. Else, let's grab the gross amount and put the ampersand there, which makes the last part of the expression all the string and is still owed. Now this one's, like I say, this, this week is kind of short, kind of simple, but I just want to show you, I'm going to start looking at some of these functions that will make sense in what you're doing and start looking at maybe some loss of specific information if we want to, or some other categories we want to. Ooh, let me get rid of that at the very end. It's still old. Let's check the syntax. No errors found. Let's go in and pull this up. So again, we have the same information. So let's go back and, and look all three of these again real quickly before we end the day. So our IFF, the first part is our expression, so invoice is paid or invoice plate equals true, then the first part of the comma is our true statement. The second part, the invoice uh, gross amount is still owed, is our false, if it's false. Then select statement, or the select case statement, is you select the object that you want to evaluate, then you give it a case. In this one's case is true, paid in full. If case is false, then our gross amount is still owed. And in the last, if paid invoice equals true, paid in full, else give me the gross amount. So that's our, that's our lesson for today. I hope that this has helped you see some more of the functionality inside Crystal. If you have any questions, like I said, you can uh, easily just shoot me an email. And let me pull that back up even so that if you want to contact Tom Zedell or myself, let me make that a full screen here. Here's our numbers and email addresses, and I hope this has helped a lot. And we'll see you guys next time. Let me, let, let, let me see if there's any questions. I'm, I apologize. Let me jump in here. See if there's any questions. Uh-oh. I'll pull that back up. I'm just looking if there's any questions. There's a little box in here that talks about questions, and sometimes I don't get to see them all. And it's really a small screen, so... I don't see any questions, so if um, I hope this helped, and we'll see you guys next time. If you have any, like I said, if you have any questions, or if you have a topic you'd like for me to cover, shoot me an email.
See you guys next time. Thanks.